How do you summarize a year of God's faithfulness in Thailand through a community of people who have faith in God to accomplish a task that is bigger than any one person? It just takes a little bit of obedience. And I hope that in the next few minutes, I can somehow capture the faithfulness of our God and his greatness for the need that exists here. Sometimes I feel like it was just yesterday that I was talking to you about being prepared for the missionary journey. Part of my preparation of coming here to Thailand was, was buying many different things, and because of God's gracious gifts and the support of people like you, Epaphroditus, I was able to buy everything that I needed. God supplied every need that I had in order to go and share the good news with the lost. God doesn't leave his people unsupplied. One of the things that I got was this pair of shoes, and you might recognize these shoes from my very first YouTube video, post exactly a year ago. Uh, they're a little bit... Uh, yeah, so it looked look pretty gross at this point. But one of the greatest joys that I've experienced in this pair of shoes is being able to run with so many different people. People who I've been able to have deep and meaningful kingdom and eternal conversations with during those runs. These shoes have served me well. As I prepared, I invested some money in some shoes that would, that would uh, work for the long run, literally. And God has provided. And I've still got a couple miles left in these shoes. And so I'm, I'm so thankful for the support that I have been given to come here. And I'm so thankful for all the memories that these shoes represent. I have a few, a few more miles left in these shoes. And then I actually have some new ones that I'm so excited to break into. But I'm going to tell you, the, the greatest joy comes from using your resources, whatever they may be. I get pretty excited over a pair of shoes. Whatever they might be to advance the kingdom of God. For me, it's running with people and having deep, meaningful conversations. Asking them, probing questions about their faith and using them as a platform for discipleship. They not only support me as a platform for my feet, but they support the kingdom of God. How are you using your resources to advance the kingdom? Oh, I'm so thankful that God has allowed me to be here for a year using this and many other resources for the development of his kingdom. In reflection over the last year, John 15, 16 has risen to the surface as one that is so defining of what God has done here. In that verse, uh, Jesus is talking about the vine and the branches. And not only does he talk about the first generation being connected to the vine, abiding in that vine, but that vine producing fruit that also abides. I've traveled a long way. I brought pretty much everything I own in three of these trunks over to a new place. But God has proven himself faithful. And I want to share with you some of the things that are overflowing out of my heart, some of the, the thanksgivings that I, I raise up to God in praise. And I also attribute to some of you because you have prayed, because you have given because you have called, and because you have, you have reached out to me in encouragement. Because this fruit that God has produced inside of this vine is beginning to abide. I can just remember opening up my notebooks of my students and comparing their work from, from the notes they took at the beginning of the year as seventh grade started, and then at the end of the year as they were basically eighth graders. The, the school year had to end online, so we didn't take a lot of handwritten notes at the end, but there was a marked difference in the handwriting, in the organization and the structure. The students, my students, who are, I deeply care about are learning to take notes. Praise the Lord. Hello, brother. Oh, brother man. One day at lunch um, at school, um, we were eating some amazing food. I don't remember the name of it, but I, I just enjoy it, right? Uh, a mother comes up to me and she says, thank you. And I was just getting to know her. I wasn't even sure what she was saying or what the connection was. And she said, you're, you're, you're mentoring my son, and I'm so thankful that you're doing that. Thank you so much for investing your life in him. Mentorship is only possible because I'm here, and I'm able to spend intentional time with these students here on their level, getting to know them and seeing what God is calling them to and sort of trying to encourage them to find that out. I've got thankful mothers, and I've got growing students. To God be the glory. When I look out across the campus of Chiang Rai International Christian School, I see so many young men who are searching for role models, who are searching for people that they can uh, start to act like, start to think like, start to speak like. And, and I can tell you that through the media and most of the world, there's, there's not a lot of great examples. I can say that because I've seen those examples. I've even tried to emulate some of that behavior subconsciously and also consciously. But I can praise the Lord that, that due to so many different factors, mostly the Lord's grace in my life, 
I've been able to be a role model to a lot of these young men. And God has used me in this situation in a unique way because I'm, I'm the only um, young male single teacher at my school. So these students have an opportunity to see someone live out their faith in a context that is a little bit similar to theirs. I'm not saying that I'm perfect. If you talk to the students, they'll tell you that I messed up. I'm honest with them. I'm authentic with them about that. And that gives them someone to look towards. I'm so thankful that I'm here. So not only can I teach them content about history and economics and psychology, but they can watch my life. And they begin to emulate what I do. And I can tell them, please, don't go down these paths. But go down these paths. Because this is what God has called us to do as young men. So I'm so thankful that I have the opportunity to be a role model for young men here in Chiang Rai, Thailand. When we go about trying to measure God's faithfulness, it's not always easy. Two of the ways that I've done that is, is, is by just checking and seeing the, 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 the needs that, I, that have been met and also how those gone into once. My mom came to visit. That was a fantastic experience, and she blessed me with her presence here, except for that one time. Whoa! And I can also uh, just see God's faithfulness as time has gone by and I've been able to move into a new place. If you didn't know, I did move. God provided for a new location for me to live in. How else do I remember how God's faithfulness is true over time? Now that was close. My mom was trying to use the God's faithfulness toothpaste. You don't just go use the God's faithfulness toothpaste. This toothpaste is part of the record of what God has done over the last 12 months. 12 months ago, I showed you this tube of toothpaste. It was very full. And I know, I projected it would last two years. And either it's going to last two years and I'll remain single definitely um, and have gross breath or I'm gonna finish it the next month. The latter is the most likely. But I am so thankful for you following along with me in this. And I'm so thankful, th thankful for my mom coming all the way to Thailand to visit me and being gracious enough to use her own toothpaste. I caught her just in time. And I just ask you to continue to pray because the work here is not finished. In fact, the, the work here is a work that's beyond my lifetime. The work here is a work of the heart, the work of the Holy Spirit. I'm here at least another year. So would you pray? Would you continue to give? Would you continue to be on mission where you are and tell me about it? I need to hear stories of God's faithfulness. So like the video, subscribe. Share this with your friends to encourage them to continue to live out that walk, that journey of obedience. Don't forget to measure it. If we forget to look back at the faithfulness of God,